game becomes more important, no matter the opponent. This week, the Pirates edge closer to their wild card goal by winning back-to-back -back games against the down-and-out Astros. Now, the struggling and frustrated Cubs come to town, carrying a six-game losing streak. The opening is there for these Buckos, but they must seize the opportunity while they can. game becomes more important no matter the opponent this week the pirates edge closer to their wild card goal by winning back-to-back -back games against the down and out astros now the struggling and frustrated cubs come to town carrying a six game losing streak the opening is there for these buckos but they must seize the opportunity while they can Looking like a nice night here in the Berg. Forecast maybe overnight, uh, not so great, but the Buccos and Cubbies playing game one of their three game series. The Pirates have won six of the nine played so far in the season series. And really, it's great to see him back, Starling Marte. Even though you're talking about a rookie who hasn't had much playing time, Clint Hurdle Steve talked about this athleticism that he brings to the table. It's very unique. And I, I think they have missed him more than maybe we even talk about. You know, this time of year with everything is fall, it's nice to have a spark. And the Pirates have had two. Marte has been a spark. Brock Holt has been a spark. And, and you like that kind of little jolt because it, you can get a little logy even though you're involved. And those two young players have provided that kind of energy, that uh, that enthusiasm. There's Holt getting ready to take the field with the rest of the Pirates. And that's that's a good thing this time of year. Have that kind of energy, that kind of little bounce in your step at it. Buckos had uh, an off day yesterday as they prepare for this three game series then will be on the road into Cincinnati and Chicago. Take a look at Dale Swain starting lineup. The former Pirate his first year as manager of the Chicago Cubs who've lost six straight. David DeJesus leads things off and it's Luis Valbuena Anthony Rizzo this season hitting 355 against right handed pitching since uh, he was called up earlier this season. Alfonso Soriano having one of the best years of his career. Sterling Castro recently signed to a long term contract. Steve Clevenger, the catcher. Brett Jackson, Darwin Barney, and Travis Wood for the Cubs. And they'll be lining up against A.J. Burnett. His number is brought to you by Western PA Chevy dealers. They're good numbers overall. 
15 and 5. He's been very good overall, very good here in this ballpark, and extremely good against the Cubs. 6 and 0 career wise in seven starts. So you hope he can get it going and kind of just pick up where he left off. He pitched very well against the Brewers last time out. Came away with a no decision. Seven innings, gave up just a couple of hits and two runs. So you love to have your ace out there, and here he is making start. Number 26, and of course we all remember that dazzler on July 31st, the one hitter, the no-no deep into the ball game, broken up in the eighth inning. Defense behind him in the outfield, Andrew McCutcheon. We just showed you Sterling Marte back in the starting lineup in left, and Garrett Jones is in right. Pedro Alvarez and Josh Harrison on the left side of the infield with Brock Holt and Gabby Sanchez on the right. Rod Barajas. As usual, starts behind the plate. Josh Harrison makes his 17th start at shortstop. He's been a spark plug at times this season. And Clint Myrtle pointed out that uh, the numbers for Clint Barmas are not good at all against uh, the starter, Travis Wood. There is Dale Swaim. Uh, time for patience. And his patience has been tested, especially in that series in Washington, D.C. They Beat up, beat up uh, yesterday again, a four game series. At times, two times, benches emptied. No real punches were thrown, but you know, the Cubs getting a bit testy. Something like 15 home runs hit against 15 the Cubs homers in those four games. Most ever against the Cubs in a series. A strike called on David DeJesus. Isn't it interesting, too, Greg? You see the, those, those arguments, those semi fights. Nothing really happens until somebody's restrained. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then everybody, but everybody wants, wants to, to get out of yeah. yeah. Now let me at him. Yeah, let me at him. Hold me back, but yeah. let me go. 83 degrees at game time. 0 1 pitch to David DeJesus. Always a tough out. AJ Burnett has been a tough pitcher. 15 and 5. Tied for fourth in wins with Steven Strasburg, who will be shut down in, uh, in two starts. That'll be it for him. Gio Gonzalez and R.E. Dickey both with 18 and Johnny Cueto with 17 wins. And A.J. Burnett and Steven Strasburg with the 15 W's. And it's two and one. 136 major league wins for that man right there. Terrific career at age 35 still getting it to home plate 92 93 miles an hour. Plenty legit with the fastball. His breaking ball has been terrific this year. Popped up and on the hands ties him up. Pitcher's pitch. And Alvarez puts it away. So as we said, Steve, and as you said, uh, nothing really happens until somebody gets you, you know, in between you and your opponent. Well, Dale Swain was arguing that uh, some of the players uh, last night, anyway, it was Jamie Quirk, the bench coach, who was barking at Bo Porter, the third base coach of the Nationals. Bryce Harper at a pitch thrown way in twice the benches and bullpens emptied. There were some ejections. Now if you get uh, if you get held back now you can really go at somebody. You know I, I don't really get this Bryce Harper stuff with the uh, clown question bro and that and reacting to that ball that ball that was thrown inside was nowhere near hitting him nowhere near hitting him. He is a very confident very cocky young man very good player. Indeed. Well, apparently, what had upset the Cubs, and this is a question, uh, an age old question, is when you call off the dogs. I don't know that there's any set rule, Steve, in, in that regard, but uh, apparently, Jamie Quirk was not happy that the Washington Nationals were ahead 7 to 2, bottom of the fifth inning. Uh, they had runners at first and third, they stole second, and then. Uh, well, there used to be you call off the dogs that that that's gone by the boards. Jason so. Worth swung at a 3 0 pitch with yeah. the bases loaded and work uh, is old school. Yep. Yeah. And so he has those values and I respect those values, but they have been erased uh, or, or at least dirt kicked over them. So the next half the next inning uh, they threw inside at uh, at Harper and you saw that reaction. 2 1 count. And now it is 3 and 1. Dale Swain said it's probably one of the biggest butt whoopings I've ever gotten in my career. Talking about that series in D.C. as a coach or as a player right now, 
we're the Pirates and Nationals and Orioles of three and four years ago. So at least you know there's light at the end of the tunnel. And a walk to Valbuena. Yeah, I, I just want to take another look at this pitch to Bryce Harper. He's up there. Well, that was kind of off the plate. So I give, give him a bogey on that one. That was way in there. Message being sent. Yeah, okay. Uh, point withdrawn. We'll address the jury. Dale Swain when asked uh, how many of the current players will be on next year's opening day roster. He recently named nine. And this is a big time roster now with the September call ups. They've got a 12 man bullpen. Anthony Rizzo swinging a miss. 12 man bullpen. Probably more than five starters, possibly. Samarja will make his final start of the year tomorrow against Pittsburgh. And then and a guy they acquired today off waivers, uh, Jason Birkin from the Orioles, will more bullpen move into that spot in the rotation. He's going to start. Mm -hmm. Okay. A one count on Anthony Rizzo. 0 and 2. And shortstop Josh Harrison stationed behind second. Rizzo with a dozen homers. And along with Holt and Marte, we're talking about the spark. Great to see a lot of people in this ballpark again. It was, it was kind of a, a funny feel against the Astros, 15, 16,000. But we're going to get a bunch of people here tonight, and the weekend should be great. So back to what we've been seeing most of the summer. Ground ball to second, and Holt can't handle it. They will get no out. Air on the second baseman, puts runners at first and second. I'm not so sure they'd get two, but certainly would have gotten the lead runner. The uh, ball comes up, bounces far enough away where the recovery is not in time. Well, Burnett probably when that ball was hit, figures maybe a shot at two. And as you can tell, we weren't going to get a double play. Soriano now to the plate. Dangerous Alfonso Soriano. 26 home runs. Not the biggest guy in the world, but he's got a lot of bat speed through the zone. Let's see if the veteran can pick the rookie up. Soriano is three for 19 in his career against A.J. Burnett. Our day key matchup of the day. By the way, Soriano has grounded into 16 double plays. As you see, he's done quite well against Soriano. Three for 19. Striking out Soriano nine of those matchups. Soriano, though, a pirate killer, his career 319 average, 26 home runs, 84 career games against the Bucks. Thanks to Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. No one count on Soriano. And the ball on a strike. Burnett, a one out walk to Valbuena. Rizzo hits the ground ball. Now Soriano, 88 RBI, seventh most in the league. Looking for another ground ball is Burnett. One and two. So you look at the possibilities. Soriano with great power, but swinging at a bad ball there. He's a Strikeout candidate and a double play candidate. And AJ's got him one and two. Tied for the fifth most double plays. Soriano hitting into those uh, 16. One two pitch. And, uh, blocked by Barajas. He wanted to swing at that one. It's just simply too far outside. Two two count on the 36 year old Alfonso Soriano. So you got quite a uh, mix of experience here. Burnett 35 Barajas just turned 37 and Soriano. They've all been around a while. Those are the three principles involved right here. Two two pitch ground ball shortstop can't make the play a run will score Harrison. A diving attempt. It'll be an RBI single and a 1 0 Cubs lead. 
A walk and two ground balls. Following the pop up to DeJesus. So close to being a double play opportunity, but. Past the mound. Harrison playing to play to pull had a long way to go off the glove. Plenty of time for the runner to come around and score the first run of the ball game. It's first and second with one away and the batter is Starling Castro. Middle infield tested. Brock Holt charged with the air. And Harrison not able to cut that ground ball off by Soriano. Able to save the run, left the double play still in order to put up a zero, but that opportunity is gone. Another ground ball. Nice slick play there. Not a great feed. And the throw by Holt. Not in time to get Castro. Difficult feed from Harrison to Holt. He recovered and his throw just not in time to get Castro. Yeah, this was going to be a sparkling double play if they could pull it because really Josh takes it on a short in between hop the low throw and a really good pivot in spite of everything by Brock Holt. They came very close to pulling off an extraordinary double play to get the middleman and trying to minimize damage here. Hard to appreciate that kind of pivot with the AGH cam. It just slows it down to the point. Excellent uh, pick by Holt on the throw from Harrison. And now it's first and third, and Steve Clevenger, the catcher. One nothing Cubs. <laughs> Lefty's hitting 246 this season against A.J. Burnett. Righty's 239. This is what you look for from a veteran pitcher to minimize damage. Your middle infielder is not making good plays on balls, setting up a, a problem situation, but you can bail him out with just leaving a one run ticket on the top of the first. Yes, hope that umpire said he offered. That's a Paul Emmel calling balls and strikes. No need for an appeal there. Emmel said he went. Oh, and two to count. You won't always get that call, but the Pirates got it there. Scott Barry, the first base umpire. Jordan Baker returns, the rookie umpire. And Gary Darling at third. Crew chief. Back to Burnett. He misses it. Holt is there, and he runs to the bag oh. to get the final out. The walk costing Burnett, and the Cubs have the early lead. First inning. The Hurdles team, 72 64 record. Here is the lineup brought to you by Toyota moving forward. Brock Holt, since joining the Pirates, getting 438. He makes his fifth major league start. Starling Marte next, then Andrew McCutcheon and Garrett Jones. Gabby Sanchez, 
Right hand hitting first baseman, Pedro Alvarez at third, Ron Barajas, Josh Harrison, A.J. Burnett. Facing the 25-year-old left-hander, Travis Wood, 4-11. and 11. He was winless in his last 10 starts, going 0-8. Had a little four-game winning streak earlier in the year, but has been rough going lately. He has given up 23 home runs. That's among the leaders in the National League. Four previous starts against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Travis Wood. First pitch strike. On Brock Holt. Seven hits and 16 at bats. Again, Major League start number five. Checks and he takes. He faced a left hander, Fernando Abad, on Wednesday and went one for two with two RBIs, an infield RBI single, and a sacrifice fly against the left hander. An interesting battle on a number of fronts here. The fact that Holt is leading off and has shown that he has yeah, a great catch there, by the way. Mm -hmm. Get it before the hop. Nice. And, you know, you got a better footwork. You want to be better positioned, oh, okay. more, more balance. Okay. Nitpicking but, again. But the play was made. That's been our best Excellent defensive. Play. Excellent play. Yeah, so far, best defensive play. Yep. Holt hit 4.32, a little less than a month at Triple A Indianapolis, and he is called out on strikes and a surprise to hear that call. I'm sure he hit uh, 4.50 against lefties at Triple A this season. Well, Mr. Holt would have had an argument, but uh, you know, first-year players don't usually argue too much. Mr. Wood got the call. Starling Marte back for the first time since the oblique injury, not since August the 18th. Travis Wood likes to cut that ball in on these right hand hitters. Came over from the Cincinnati Reds last year. Little Rock, Arkansas. Not the biggest guy in the world. 5'11, 175 pounds. It is kind of interesting to see a matchup of Razorbacks here. The Razorback State, one from Little Rock and the other right across the river, North Little Rock. AJ Burnett. Travis Wood is 25 years old. And the ball bounced. Deep short. Castro casually gunned Marte out. Two outs. He comes defensively. Look like this. Brett Jackson in center. David De Jesus in right. Alfonso Soriano with 10 assists this season in left. Luis Valbuena, Starling Castro on the left side. Darwin Barney, Anthony Rizzo on the right side. Steve Clevenger behind the plate. And Barney has a consecutive game errorless streak, Steve, that has reached 122 games without an error. Guess who has one more in a Cub uniform years back? Ryan Sandberg, 123. Ball one. McCutcheon, 345 on the season, 414 against the Cubs. And on the year against left handed pitching, hitting 422. Who has the major league record for errorless games at second base? Cito Palanco, 141. Two and one. And that's a busy part of the ballpark, yeah. second base. And they were committed in the top of the first inning. Look at a second baseman who's played every day to only have two errors at that position. Two and two on McCutcheon. Hearing that Rock Four has the uh, National League record at third base. Tied, right? I believe so. He had it and then it was uh, tied by, I think, Jeff Cirillo. Matched up. By the way, Rock will be on with Rob King on the postgame show tonight. We can talk about that. The trivia question might involve them. Who has more career home runs, Rob King or John Randy? 
Won't let it go, will you? Lock four. Just have to look at the T-shirt. Three-two pitch. Fly ball to left. Soriano under it. And Soriano makes the catch. The Pirates retired in order. One nothing Cubs. Tino tips to win from Steve Blass. What do you have for us? Well, it's very busy around the ballpark. Got a kind of auto traffic kind of a theme. Don't think you can back into a win. The Cubs have been struggling, but uh, don't take them for granted. Create some space between the Bucks and L.A. It's a little easier to concentrate, keeping track of uh, chasing one team instead of two. Get rid of the Dodgers. Get them off your back and let's, uh, take dead aim at the Cardinals. Actually, I think that's a nice tip for those coming out tomorrow night and Sunday for yep. you're looking for parking spaces. Try and get here early. Yeah. Park, uh, you know, downtown offering a lot of parking spaces. You don't want to be, dude, where's my car at yeah. the end of the ballgame? Exactly. Or you could do that, of course, Station Square. Yeah. Take the Clipper. A lot of alternative uh, parking spots for you. Yeah. In fact, if you find one, take it. <laughs> Absolutely. Legally now. Well, take it. Yeah. Oh, one Brett Jackson bouncing ball right side backhanded hope pretty nice play there. Let's go downstairs to Dan Potash. All right guys thank you very much. You know Steve you were talking about creating a little bit of space. So let me have our viewers at home chew on this. The Pirates enter tonight's game at 72 and 64. One and a half games out of the final wild card spot. Now if you don't like your ch their chances think about this. The Cardinals last year after 136 games uh -huh. the same record and we're eight and a half games out of the last wild card spot. Do I need to remind you what happened to the Cardinals at season 10? Mm -hmm. Connect the dots, Dan. You mm -hmm. got it. You got it. <laughs> Not bad. That's our lesson tonight. Oh, well, hey, it's a good one. Chew on that one, darn right. Darwin Barney at the plate takes ball one. And uh, Dan, those Cardinals are playing the Brewers tonight. Kyle Loesch looks for his 15th win of the season, as does his opponent, Ivani Gallardo. Astros and Reds are tied at two in Cincy, in the bottom of the first. Pirates will be in Cincinnati starting on Monday night. We get a road trip and then to Wrigley Field in Chicago. See these Cubs again. Here you see the scoreboard and watch the Dodgers and the Giants. Pirates tied with LA, both a game and a half back of the Cardinals. Redbirds trail the Braves by three and a half for the top seed. Two balls and a strike on Darwin Barney. Cubs are going to see a lot of the Pirates, vice versa. Beginning tonight, these two clubs scheduled to meet seven times in the next 11 days. Let's hope they're still in hibernation. Two outs.
Bottom third of the order. And this is a not an easy out coming up. Travis Wood. Eight for 37 at the plate this season and it is third career home run. Earlier this year against Ivani Gallardo and the Brewers. How many times you see pitchers wearing armor? Of course, that's his pitching arm. The answer to the question is hardly ever. One oh pitch. I wonder what Cooley, John Hallahan would have said if I asked him for some armor oh. when I was going up to hit. Well, you can't say on <laughs> on the air. You can't, right? No, no, can't say. No, no, it would have been a bad reaction. It would have sent Hooley back to the Styrofoam Cup, I think. Yeah, Hooley, John Hallahan, a longtime Pirate Equipment Manager, one of the greats, uh, what a, 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 a player favorite, classic, classic yep. person, uh, you know, in, in a city that has characters. Yep. Yep. old school. He'd always have that styrofoam cup as you walk by and a lot of people thought it was coffee 24 hours a day. He'd have that. <laughs> and, a, and a lot of times it was coffee. <laughs> Struck him out looking good quick. Top of the second for Burnett. Garrett Jones will lead off for the Pirates in the bottom of the second against Travis Wood. One nothing Cubs. Pirates Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. By your Toyota dealers. Life is all about the ride. See your Western Pennsylvania Toyota dealers today for a great car with a great deal. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. one nothing. Cubs lead. Go to the bottom of the second. 10th birthday party going on. Hey, join the Pirates this Sunday for Grandparents Day. Presented by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Get your picture taken with Pirates mascots. And make your own Grandparents Day card on Federal Street before the game. Plus, purchase discounted game tickets and much more. For your tickets, go to Pirates.com slash grandparents. Final game of this homestand, and we are winding down the regular season. There's Joe Ringle. Good dog gone. We haven't seen yeah. him. In a, he's a grandparent there. Yeah. The left of your screen. Remember Joe, big uh, oh, lefty who would throw batting practice Luke often. And manage the little pirates. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Joe. Joe Ringo. Good man. Here at Jones now. Eight game hitting streak. Hitting 292, 23 homers, 75 runs batted in. Jones, Gabby Sanchez, Pedro Alvarez. Oh, 
Ball and a strike on Garrett Jones now playing every day, including, of course, against lefties. Another great BP pitcher for the Pirates, Bobby Del Greco. Yep. Former Pirate center fielder. Bobby's done awfully well. Uh, talk about a player favorite. He's a Bobby Del Greco. Players, I guess, especially pitchers, love to have him oh, throw. Yeah. Yeah. He peed at them at uh, Three Rivers. Pitchers love to uh, have him chase around a lot of fly balls. Now ball right at the second baseman. The shift was on at Jones Browns to Darwin Barney. I'm very proud of his son, Bob Del Greco Jr., prominent attorney in the city. So with one away, here's Gabby Sanchez. Played 30 games with the Pirates, hitting 288 in Pittsburgh with two homers, six RBIs with the Bucks. On the screen is overall numbers. Pirates and Marlins. 298 career hitter against lefties. How about Wood splits, Steve? Uh, Left-handed hitters batting just 196 against him. You know he had that run. Uh, that he can. He can. Get some things done. A nice four game win streak. Last time out against Milwaukee, good hitting team, seven innings, just three runs given up. Didn't walk a batter. And not automatic. Uh, Travis Wood, they got him in that Sean Marshall trade. Mm -hmm. and, um, really, the Reds got Marshall thinking he might be their closer. He pretty, pitched pretty well five of his last six starts. Nothing to show for it. Second stint with the Cubs this season. Recalled for the second time from Triple A Iowa, May 22nd. Two and three lifetime against the Pirates with a 5.79 ERA in five games. And this is his second start against Pittsburgh. Check swing and still one and two. But these splits. First half of the season, ERA of 305. Since the All-Star break, 633. Have a chance to put the wood to him. And that's good. Ten last ten starts. Mentioned the 23 home runs allowed, tied for fifth most in the league. And the Nationals hit 15 home runs in their four-game sweep of the Cubs in D.C. One in the series opener on Monday, six each of the next two nights, two in their 9 2 victory yesterday. The 15 home runs most that any team has ever hit against the Cubs in a series of any length. Now that's amazing. The previous high was 14 by the Milwaukee Braves in a three game series at Wrigley Field in May of 1956, according to the Elias Sports Bureau. Most ever by this franchise given up. Gary Sanchez works a one out walk. Our Barrel Automotive League leaders stat. Look at the National League leaders in home runs against right handed pitchers. Pedro Alvarez second. Aaron Jones up there. Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Pirates will see a right hander tomorrow. Of course, hope to see a right hander before too long in this game. Chase Wood, if they can. There's Jeff Samarja, who'll make his last start of the season tomorrow. And shut him down. The Strasburg effect. Mm -hmm. See another lefty on Sunday. Jeff Samarja, 8 and 13, a 391 earned run average. And can that be a guarantee, Greg, that if you shut him down, the arm's still not going to blow up at some point? There's no guarantee. You cannot look inside a shoulder and, and an elbow and see what the tolerance is. And you could pitch forever. Maybe he's going to go no matter what you do. Double play ball. 6 3 DP. 
Travis Wood gives up a one out walk and gets Alvarez to hit into the double play. It's one nothing Cubs. edition of the Dan and Dan show. A little bit shorter and I have more control this time. Penguin head coach Dan Biles may in attendance wearing his pirate garb. Not surprised to see you here because you've been to what like 50 games this summer? This, this is like my 15th game so far this summer but uh, we're great seats here right behind the home play here and uh, getting a buck a win tonight. Now we had a chance to uh, get together on Monday uh, after the series in Milwaukee. I drove up to Michigan met you for uh, I guess a uh, more leisurely morning caught you fishing yeah and uh, someone caught a really big salmon <laughs> yes we did that's my last uh, getaway before the the start of the season uh, had four or five days uh, really by myself I uh, did some great fishing salmon were in there and uh, you were there for for one big one it'll be a future series when the penguins take the ice and I'm very optimistic that we will see hockey this year as am I as am I I'm optimistic and I'm ready to go on the 21st how was that fish by the way uh, it was outstanding. Well, you, you're going to see me cut it up, which uh, I'm, I'm not that uh, great at, but uh, a lot of good good salmon. We had it with uh, Christian back at, uh, in Cleveland when we got there. Well, very nice to see you supporting the Pirates. Hope to see you in a few weeks. Absolutely, Dan. Guys, it's all yours. Dan Potash, that was not trick photography. No, I didn't catch that fish. He did. No, I know, but oh. even with that. No, no, that was the real me? deal. They, they think that maybe we photoshopped the fish. <laughs> it was not photoshopped. <laughs> No, it was the real deal. <laughs> the way Dan and the waiters in the water was. Yeah, uh, me and wearing the waiters in the water, that was actually, that could be Photoshop. <laughs> we won't talk about that. That's a story for another day. We'll hey. tell Coach we're anxious to have some of the salmon up here in the booth. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and don't compete against him in fishing or golf, Dan. I will not touch him in golf. <laughs> we already know that. But with the fish that the guys upstairs, Greg Brown and Steve Blast, want to know because they're always eating up there. Yeah. Can you bring them some salmon next time? I, we can do that. We can, do, we can bring it back to, to Pitt, and uh, we'll make sure they have some. Hey, in the playoffs, he's bringing salmon. Uh, no, that's it. a deal. There you that go. is a deal. Good there, luck to. There's got to be 20 pounds of that fan, uh, salmon left. Yeah. Well, that's a nice catch, huh? That's not catch Man. and release. You can't yeah. pick them up to put them back in the water. Good stuff. Hope they get the. All those labor issues worked out. Talking with uh, general counsel of the Columbus Blue Jackets of Pittsburgh, who stopped by the booth. Greg Kirstein mm -hmm. is here, Steve, and he and uh, you and I were chatting about that. He's hopeful, as is Coach Dan Balsma, that they will get things worked out soon. Yep, all those Penn fans ready to go. Luis Valbuena walked. Scored in the first. Honor and run. In the first inning. After David De Jesus let off, the ball game popping up. Valbuena walked and he would score. A base hit by Soriano. Ron Holt committed an error. That proved. Costly. 
But it's awfully early and uh, he'll certainly have his chances uh, not only on the field once again, but at the plate. If that error cost you the game one to nothing, well, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. That's right. How about the unearned run the Braves scored yesterday against Colorado on a missed catch from the pitcher by the pitcher from the catcher just a toss back and runner third scored one nothing when the, yep, the Rockies pitcher dropped the toss back from the catcher. That'll happen once in 25 years Did it ever happened to you. No. No. And you always Did see, you ever see it happen. No. I remember. Last homestand uh, we had a, a ball get away but nobody advanced you know overthrown but yeah. the infielders were where they should be. Every time for 150 million times without anything happening. What the, the second one nothing game in a row? Yeah. They've got 29 innings without an earned run, something like that. Oh, how about this play by Sanchez to use the bare hand to knock it down? Oh, As it took a up. weird hop, not straight up, but up and to the right. And so Gabby Sanchez uses his bare hand to slap it down. How about this reaction? Straight up in the air. It's a, it's a hand save and a beauty. Yep. Knowing you can't get the glove over and up, do what you can, and you recovered in a terrific play. How about that one? He's probably upset he didn't just catch it. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. You know the AGH game is wonderful, but sometimes it slows it down and it takes away some of the appreciation by, about how quick you have to react in that kind of situation. Yeah, wow! You just heard still. reading lips. Wow! A little flare and oh, just over the head of Pedro Alvarez. Rizzo muscles it out there to left. Just out of the reach. Base hit for Rizzo brings up Soriano. He had the base hit off Harrison's glove, bring home a run. Just his fourth hit in 20 career at bats against AJ Burnett. Soriano. His best year with the Cubs, certainly in terms of RBIs, has matched last year's total. It'll be his best RBI year since he had 95 five years ago with the Washington Nationals. Do you have any idea where he is on that long term contract? I mean, he's got through 2014. Signed him before the 07 campaign. That's, that's a lot of years. Where there had been uh, rumblings that the Pirates at the deadline had talked to the Cubs and that had Soriano agreed, he could have wound up wearing a Pirates uniform. Of course, he has veto power. Dale Swaim uh, has really. Been impressed with Soriano. That you know, Soriano's not going to win any Gold Gloves out in left field, but he's catching anything he gets to, and uh, great work ethic. Line drive to left, and a base hit in front of Marte. Holy mackerel! Marte just picked it up and gunned it to third base and sails it back to the backstop. That was Marte. Just I think Steve, quite honestly, maybe trying to show off the arm unnecessarily. I mean the runner had stopped at second. Where did that come from? He just wanted to show off the rifle. Well, he, he did, but uh, where was the target? Uh, he, I think he panicked after the ball bounced. He just picked it up and just heaved it. That's a young player's mistake, a panic reaction. Okay, I don't have the ball, and now I'm going to just pick it up and throw it as hard as I can. And oh yeah, maybe he thought the runner was going to. It was back advance. 
So he picked it up figuring that uh, Rizzo had taken off for third when Rizzo had actually stopped after rounding second. So another error. This has not been a defensive gem type game so far. A.J. Burnett trying to keep it together in spite of that. Dangerous Starling Castro at the plate. And then we talked at the very outset about Marte being back and Brock Holt and what a little uh, jolt of energy the two younger players can provide. Well, you also have to accept that you'll get some in inexperience. Yep, gonna have to swallow hard sometimes. They call them growing pains. Sometimes they can hurt. The pain can hurt more than others. Burnett tries to pick up his young left fielder now. Heavy load. He already picked up his second baseman. And one on Castro. Talk about young. Castro, two hits shy of 500 hits, and he's only 22 years old. He signed a seven year, $60 million deal a week ago. He is seven for 11 against A.J. Burnett. Now ball, base hit. One in, two will score as Marte can't field it cleanly. And he'll be charged with his second error. And it's three nothing. This is officially a mess right now. You better clean it up quickly. They'll give uh, Castro a two run single. It's too bad because Steve, I think if Marte fields it cleanly, he's got such an arm, he may have a shot at Soriano. Decent pitch, good hitting, finds the hole. And if he gets this ball cleanly, he's got a shot at Soriano. Yes, he does. Starring Marte is having a shaky start to this ball game. I'm right about it. Two run single. And an error allowing Castro to go an extra 90 feet. So Ray Searage out. The Bucks down three. Marte on Wednesday played the game for State College. And then as a DH. That was Tuesday as a DH and then played two games in Indianapolis. Their first two games of their best of five playoff series. You simply can't have this kind of thing happening if you are involved in a wild card race, division race, whatever kind of race you're in. Three errors. We are in the third inning. Steve Clevenger bounced one with deflected. Just off of A.J. Burnett and to second baseman Brock Holt for the final out of the first inning. Tips to win. Don't think you can back into a win. Mm. And that's lined to right center field. It is four nothing. And the Cubs are an angry bunch. And uh, they're anxious to take out their frustrations on somebody as they come in riding a six game losing streak and beaten up badly in D.C. in the four game series and they lead four to nothing in the third. High fastball up near the top of the zone. Those are the kind of pitches that get hit no who you are. What's your previous record. Four zip now Brett Jackson. Not the kind of start to this series Clint Hurdle wanted following the off day. Two outs. Jackson last time up grounded out to Brock Holt. Well, you figure the Pirates to get opportunities against the Cubs and Travis Wood but you don't want to have to climb too high a hill. And Jackson offered. Well, when these teams score four or more, 
Cubs 40 and 26 Pirates 57 and 20. Cubs have scored four so far. Still low and two on the rookie Brett Jackson. First round pick out of the University of Cal Berkeley. Now there are three errors, but there's also four straight base hits in this scenario going on after two quick outs. Yeah, not just the, it's the not fielding. just the defense, but uh, you know if errors happen, it doesn't mean you're not still responsible for getting outs. And strike three, call. Now the Cubs pick up. Three runs into the bottom half of the third inning, four nothing. Between innings uh, goes up to Starling Marte and probably basically let him know keep your head in the game. Yep. It's going to happen. Just relax, have fun. That's been Turtle's mantra uh, for the last several weeks. We've been doing it for a couple of years since he joined the Pirates. I'm sure he's talked about it a lot as a manager. But to try and get these guys, Steve, to forget about you know the importance of the game, as he says, the game doesn't know that the game is important. So go back out there and. Play the game like you're in your backyard and you're six years old again. Have fun. You can't do anything about those errors. Yeah. They're done. Can't one, get them back. One of the errors costs the Pirates a run, by yeah. the way. And don't live with it. Yeah. Don't, don't take it to the nth degree. It happened. Move on. Don't let it happen again. The great thing about this game of baseball is that you will have an opportunity. Either offensively or defensively, for certain offensively at this early stage, to help contribute and get that run or runs back. And you want to embrace that up. You want that. Yeah. Give, give me a chance. Give me another chance to be good. Yeah. Give me a chance to get that redeemer. Two and two on Barajas. Will Walker still out, and it sounds like uh, he won't be available this. Particular series earlier in the week, they've been hopeful he would play. But that back tightness thing he was to take batting uh, swings anyway in the batting cages inside today. Two and two, the count. He's a uh, Walker likely to miss yet another series. Barajas. Harrison and Burnett against Travis Wood. One start for Wood against the Pirates this year. 
Went five innings, gave up a couple runs, so didn't pitch all that badly. It was an eight four loss as it turned out. And as Steve says, just a couple of runs in five innings. His overall work against the Pirates 19 innings, 12 runs given up. So the Pirates have had a good bit of success against this left hander. Wood strikes out Barajas. The second K for Travis Wood. Bring the whole family. On Sunday, 135, all fans 14 and under take home a Neil Walker Fathead Junior Wall decal thanks to Trip Total Media. Come early for the number one Cochrane Family Fun Zone on Federal Street and stay after the game. Kids can run the bases thanks to HK Anderson Pretzels. Go to pirates.com for tickets. A whole lot happening on Sunday. Grandparents' Day and Wall decals. Neil Walker. The strike is called on Josh Harrison. Here's an 0 for his last 10. And again, we're talking about this pitcher who has uh, just been really struggling mightily lately. The 10 starts 0 and 8. In the month of June, he started five games, gave up a total of eight runs. That's why he is still pitching in the big leagues. Back then, showing what he's capable of doing. It's been a struggle since. Clevenger asked for that pitch upstairs. Harrison didn't offer. One time Cub prospect, Josh Harrison, sixth round pick in 2008. Drives one to center toward the track. Jackson, two outs. Strikeout and a flyout. Now Travis Wood faces A.J. Burnett. The Cubs have lost six in a row. Since the All Star break, they are 3 and 23 on the road. Their overall road number 17 and 52. Familiar number 17 road wins. Two years ago, the Pirates total. So just three more than the Astros. We've talked often about how bad the Astros were playing, especially away from Minute Maid and away from Wrigley. These Cubs have won just 17 games. That's amazing. Three and twenty-three since the break. Yeah. The road. But we lived it. I'm telling you. We we did, and you know what? That record is gone right now. Yeah. It's four nothing Cubs. Yeah. Three pitch strikeout of AJ Burnett. First three innings. Not so great for Pittsburgh. See what they can do starting in the fourth. Pirates baseball on Root Sports is brought.
box. Time for tonight's trivia question brought to you by AT&T Mobility. Which current Cub, the longest tenured with the team? Should be easy. I'll let you start, Steve. Well, give me a chance to think about it. I'm, I am. All right. I'll get back to you. All right. Pirates will need to get back into this game. Trailing 4 0 to the Cubs. Darwin Barney will lead off against A.J. Burnett. We uh, check out what's happening with the Cardinals. Currently, you know, rain delay in St. Louis against the Milwaukee Brewers. Houston and Cincinnati tied at two in the fourth. The Atlanta Braves and New York Mets scoreless through three. Love. There we go. Is this a, is it a trick question? A trick question? Longest tenure? That means the longest in the, in the big leagues. Cub. Yes. Okay. Current Cub. Soriano. That's your guess. Mm -hmm. All right. That would on the surface. Seem obvious. Two and zero. Oh. Unless Kerry Wood changed his pitching arm and coming back as Travis Wood. No. Well. Two zero oh count on Darwin Barney. And the strike. Twenty-six year old Portland, Oregon native. Barney, not a rookie, but in relation to this trivia question, they've used 20 different rookies this season, tied for third most in franchise history. And that's going to be a tough play for Burnett, who spun out early. Repair your divots. And a base hit. Things aren't going Burnett's way. Chopped right there, and it's just going to just dig it up. The, the knee took. Yeah. He starts us. He actually slid early. That he made the divot with a knee. Yeah. He just slid too early, I think, Steve. And the, and the wrong angle, yeah. going straight down. He, he wanted to make the, the quick slide yep. to stop himself and then throw, but he just he would slide, as you'll see, just a little bit too soon. And that created the divot. He's already down the ground by that time. And wisely did not throw at that point. And now Wood can, well, the runner goes. going to say Wood can bunt, but he's a good hitting pitcher, so Dale Swaim lets him swing away. Darwin, Darwin Barney took off. Infield hit for Barney. Barney has six steals and seven attempts. Going this time and a swing and a miss. 0 oh and 2. Dale Swain decides to take off the bunt with his good hitting pitcher at the plate. What has he got to lose? Under normal circumstances, he would have him bunting all the way. Fly ball to left. Cheer for Stalin Marte. Yeah, that's what happens, young man. That's part of it. All part of it. He's going to make uh, 
the crowd react in the same way, but not in mock cheer for many a time in his oh, yeah. career. And he, he's going to he's going to wow them. Some of the stuff he, he already has in a short amount of time. He is a five tool player. Well, we certainly saw the strong arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David De Jesus has popped up and bounced out. Helps figure to run a course. Most teams do, especially with the Burnett on the mound. Cubs have stolen 80 bases. That's in the top six. The Jesus four for 24 in his career against AJ Burnett, a career that started in Kansas City after being drafted in the fourth round out of Rutgers University 12 years ago. 32 year old Brooklyn native spent eight seasons with the Royals last year with Oakland. Signed as a free agent by the Cubs this winter. And a pop up shortstop Harrison. Two outs. And Greg I don't, I don't care if you're a rookie pitcher or a guy like A.J. Burnett has been around a lot of years. You've got to fight and grind to keep your concentration and your focus and your application because there's a lot of stuff flying around you and you can't get caught up in it. Uh, and, and it's not automatic. Sometimes you're out there and, you're, and your, your mind gets drawn to that stuff and then you, you, you've got problems. So you have to fight your way through it. Stay, keep doing what you're doing, really part of the ball game. Just can't cave in. Just keep, keep grinding. There's a lot of stuff swirling around right now. Valbuena. And you kind of see that in A.J. Burnett. You, you don't see a lot of difference in, in his approach. When, uh, you know, there's some errors around him, a freak kind of a play on that little chop bunt base hit that dug up part of the infield. Keeps track of the runner, base to it. Knowing there's a good chance with two outs, not much happening. Barney with his speed might try. Get the second. The Cubs get a cheap run to add on. Trying to contain the running game. Burnett throws over a few times. Going to the count. Box trail the Cubs. Four to nothing as Chicago bats in the fourth. Pirates will have the top of the order due up in the bottom half. Second time against Travis Wood. Second go round. And if you think it's a methodical approach by A.J. Burnett, it is. And that's okay. That's the way he works. That's his pace. He's been pretty darn successful with it. Gets the strikeout. And we'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Four nothing Cubs.
at PNC Park and trivia question is Steve Wright which current Cub the longest tenured with the team Steve said Alfonso Soriano drum roll got to be right Steve right uh, Carlos Marmol setting up for failure would you rule that as a trick question no it's, it's the, the trick at the end showing me Soriano like I'm going to get excited about being right for the first time did you get excited I did <laughs> I, I, I did I did and uh, had the uh, rug yanked out from underneath me Thank you. Thank you once again. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Here's Brock Holt now takes strike one from Travis Wood. You don't uh, want to get in a safe situation right now. Mr. Marmol has been brilliant uh, recently. 16 straight saves he's recorded. That's a good point. Dude. Goes upstairs and it's Holt to offer strikeout number four. These are not 95 mile an hour fastballs. And that one was not in the strike zone. If you will chase those kind of pitches, you'll see a lot more just like that. Travis Wood is 88, 89, 90. Fastball. He's won 15 major league games, lost 21. He said coming over from the Reds after last season. Marte grounded his short his first at bat. Showed bunt. And now swings and misses. Looking to get back in the good graces. First pitch he saw in the big leagues. Pirates looking for their first hit. Fourth inning. Jinx, Hex, Sorcery involved. Let's see if it works. Of course it's going to work. Marte tries to break up the no hitter. Checks. Up. Oh. Space umpire Scott Barry brings him up. Number five for Mr. Wood. Check it out. Yeah. In the 50 50 range. I've said this before. I know you probably shouldn't, but I, I, I believe this. That's a different camera angle. Uh, it looked, I mean, a drive hit deep to left center field. Soriano back to the wall. And he, oh, he made the catch. He held on to it. He thought that wall was going to come up a tad earlier, but he held on. He was ready to brace himself against the wall. Soriano, Ralph McCutcheon of extra bases.
Yeah, I think Soriano gave everybody kind of a fake, uh, thinking he was closer to the wall than he was. See, he's right, but when he jumps up, he's figuring he's coming down up against the wall, but he had about yeah, yeah. five feet. It wasn't, uh, he left. had a little more room than he thought. Uh, McCutcheon thought maybe he dropped it. As uh, he sat on the turf on the uh, track for a few moments. And Travis Wood appreciates the uh, Soriano effort. Alfonso has some adventures out yeah, there. Yeah, he has. Here, too, he used to jump. Here. Yeah, yep. he jumped up and dropped the ball here. Do you remember the time he blew a game for the Cubs yep. in the ninth That's the inning? That's what I'm talking about. He jumped up, you know, his signature jump. And guess who comes up to the plate? There's Anthony Rizzo. Reached on a Brock Holt error in the first, singled and scored in the third. There in the on deck circle following Rizzo. Rizzo. His teammates nicknamed him Ratso, you know, from the movie Midnight Cowboy. Is that the Hoffman role? Yeah. Ratso Rizzo? Probably so. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's an easy one. Hard hit. Diving stop, Brock Holt. Oh, there you go. Rizzo again. Brock Holt robs Rizzo of a hit. Rizzo robbery. Backhand gets up the recovery and a good throw. Scrappy little play. Rock Holt. Rops Rizzo of a hit. Here's Soriano. Two for two. To center field. McCutcheon wants to rob him. And he does. <laughs> Turnabout. Fair play. Don't think McCutcheon isn't thinking that right now. Now you could tell the expression on his face when he went around first base and was looking out there, wondering if Soriano was putting it on a little bit. Now this is full throttle coming in for this ball. Winds up catching about actually letter high. That's kind of become a trademark of uh, McCutcheon to make that slide. Catches it head high and Soriano. The what, ball well and smiles. What, uh, high five for a fly ball to center field. What have we come to here? Castro found the ball back. No one won. We haven't done a look alike in a while. What about Castro and Johnny Cueto? Not bad. Not bad. To the count on Castro. And there's a base hit to left. No two pitch. Castro's second hit. Two runs single in the third, giving him 69 runs batted in. And now with that hit. He has reached the 500 hit mark for his career, so they'll throw that ball out of play. Yep. A milestone for this young Cubs player at the age of 22. And only 27 players in Major League history have reached their 500th career hit before turning 23. The only active player to have done that, Alex Rodriguez. And Castro won't turn 23 until next March. Better keep track of him at first base, too, with two out. Not much happening. He's stolen 21 bases. Modest lead. So he's gone to a couple of All-Star games already. He's going to be around a long time wearing that Cubs uniform. He's going to put up some phenomenal numbers. Of course, there's a former Cubs shortstop that 
Good ones too. There he goes. Closer play. Maybe we might have thought initially. Still in base number 22 for Castro. No surprise that he was gone. Two steals caught 12 times this season. Clevenger singled in a run in the third. One ball, one strike. Castro scored in the third on the Clevenger single to right. A run in the first inning was unearned. One of the three the Cubs scored in the third was also unearned. And that strikes out Clevenger. The Pirates. Need to go to work, head to the bottom of the fifth. They look for their first hit against Travis Wood. Sports and earlier we gave you an injury update on second baseman Neil Walker. You know what? Let's hear from the man himself. The last two days have been encouraging. The off day yesterday, and uh, um, I was able to swing the bat today right-handed, which was good. And I'm uh, working, uh, you know, to do some other things. So we're uh, we're getting close, but I can't give you a, a day or anything like that. So it's all day to day. Greg Brown, you mentioned earlier that Walker was able to take some swings from the right side of the plate, about 30, and he went on to say that the inflammation in his back is almost gone. So, again, it's been a slow process, but the good news this afternoon. Now, that is good to hear that he's uh, making some progress, Dan. I know that Clint Hurdle talked about how they expected to, to be challenged without a guy like Walker, who is one of their top RBI men. Jones pops this pitch up and it's out of play. Fortunate for the Pirates that uh, Holt stepped in and started knocking the cover off the ball. They struggled for Brock tonight, striking out twice. There's two at bats. 
Strike two. The Pirates look for their first hit. Travis Wood has faced the minimum. Walked the batter, got the double play right after that. And the longer you let any starting pitcher go without getting to him, the you know, more confident they usually become. Start uh, throwing the ball like this and getting out. Say, hey, I can do this thing. I can do this thing. Start rolling along. And you, you yourself get caught up in it as a pitcher. Once again, Clevenger asking Wood to deliver that fastball upstairs, hoping Jones would chase. He did not. And three and two. And at 89 miles an hour, you better get it high enough up there. And throw that as a high strike. A pop up. Soriano. Tonight's AGH Sports Medicine injury update. Chad Qualls out today throwing a simulated game. Clint Hurdle said he could be back in a couple of days. Qualls has been out since August 25th. Left toe sprain. Injury update brought to you by our friends at Allegheny Sports Medicine, official medical provider of the Pirates. He's behind Jeff Parsons. Bucks have not set their rotation for Cincinnati, but Clint Hurdle also said it's uh, possible that Carsons would miss another start. He said when uh, he first went down, he was going to probably miss a start, maybe more. Gabby Sanchez, the only base runner for the Bucks. Jeff Karstens uh, with that hip flexor problem. So we know James McDonald goes tomorrow night and Jeff Locke Sunday afternoon, but nothing yet in Cincinnati. Could be Wandy Rodriguez to start the opener of that series. We'll find out tomorrow. Two and one. Again, Travis Wood goes in. This is this time three and one on Gabby Sanchez. Alvarez on deck. It was Wandy Rodriguez and Correa who did such a good job against the Astros. Wandy. They were waiting. Pounded foul, three and two. Rodriguez got the win on Tuesday night. Seven innings of four hit shutout ball. Jeff Locke seated next to Brock Holt. He'll start Sunday's game against the Cubs. Sanchez fouls off another. Getting 308 and 14 starts with the Bucks. Trying to get something started here with one out. Pulls that ball toward left. Soriano is over. And he makes that catch. He's in right in left field for Alfonso Soriano. It's four now he's caught. Including the last three. And Pedro Alvarez comes up, having hit into that double play to end the second. Soriano with just one error, 10 outfield assists. Infielder when he came up to the big leagues Yankees, Texas Rangers. He made a little noise when they wanted him to leave the infield and go out and play the outfield. Yeah. High fly ball to center field, sending Jackson back to the wall. And there goes the no-hitter as Pedro Alvarez is into second base with a double. But Jackson almost 
pulled off a great catch there. And it looked like he had a, a better than average chance to get it because of the height of the ball. It looked like he had a chance to get back. And uh, I think when we slow it down, we're going to see how close his glove comes to this ball. A lot of carry, but it's the dead center field. Anywhere else, the Pirates not only uh, destroyed the no hitter, but they're on the board. Slow it down for you. Well, that ball hit beside his glove. Because of the height, that's why I thought he had a chance to get that really measured. But fortunately for the Pirates, he didn't. Base hit could get him on the board and start picking away at this 4 nothing lead. Barajas to run into one here, Steve. Really yeah, jump start this crowd. Yeah, and this guy's thrown 23 home runs. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah, good idea. Base hit would be nice, but Barajas had to provide a little power hitting. Is 199 on the year. Last home run August the 24th against the Brewers. Hard to believe he's batting 167 against lefties. Actually, worse against lefties than he is righties. Now this one will be caught in right field. By De Jesus. With the no hitter gone, but the shutout intact. Pirates trail 4 0. So until that home run without the, the benefit of an earned run getting those wins. Despite that fact the offense has struggled but. We get the long ball. Tonight and we'll lead that one. One to nothing still rain delay in St. Louis. Here in Pittsburgh for nothing through. Five. This is tough to lose uh, speaking of the Atlanta Braves when you don't give up any runs. Yeah. Uh, winning at one to nothing yesterday. Tim Hudson went seven scoreless. They won back to back games without the benefit of an earned run. First time in more than 28 years that a team won that way in back to back games. Bullpen action. So how it goes down, how it happens, you get in the sixth inning, you're losing by four runs. And it gets busy. That's the way it works. And your pitcher is due up second in the bottom of this inning. Yeah. 
AJ has given up seven hits. Working here in the top of sixth. Ground ball. Oh my goodness. Off the glove that leaves the hand. Harrison's okay. Strange things going on in hired infield. Strange things indeed. Base hit for Brett Jackson. Look at gunslinging, you know, it's coming down Main Street. The other guy shoots quicker and knocks the gun out of your hand. It used to happen all the time in the movies. Eight hits now for the Cubs. Darwin Barney, an infield single in the fourth. So many times we talk about the bottom third of a batting order, an opportunity to have a somewhat comfortable inning, but when that number seven man gets on, then you talk about a critical situation with the eight guy. If he gets on, you let your Pitcher bunt and it sets up an inning. And the Pirates don't need the Cubs to set up an inning because the Cubs already have a four nothing lead. It's a big, uh, big situation. And it doesn't get any easier. The Pirates struggling in just about every way. No runs, one hit, three errors, now a wild pitch. Kind of under the glove of Rod Barajas, all the way back. And well, Burnett really has his work cut out for him to try yes. and keep that run from scoring with nobody out. He does have a pitcher on deck, but we keep pointing out that he's a good hitting pitcher. And ideally, he'd like to keep Barney from advancing. Jackson, one and two, the count on Darwin Barney. Well, if you get Barney, Wood will not be bunting. Barney is one of the tougher men in the league to strike out. Sixth toughest to be exact. Awkward swing at that last pitch to take the one and two. And the runner to try to advance, so Harrison will throw there. A safe call at third. Oh, come on. Wow. Gary Darling calls the runner safe, apparently. From his view, Alvarez didn't apply the tag. And it's going to take a while, too, because that is right in front of the pirate bench. He's out, Gary. Yes, he is. He's out. He's out. Emphatically. Hurdle keeps repeating to Gary Darling. He's out. But instead, it's first and third, and nobody out. Make the right call. I, 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 I think Hurdle's just waiting to get tossed. Yeah. Well, he, he was shot out of the dugout. He said the other night to a group of season ticket holders, he said, you know, believe it or not, you can get tossed without cursing. I've done it. Yeah, you well, can show up an umpire. Sometimes and, you need a timeout, he said. Timeout chair. Look, Darling is really letting him go for a while. He's probably about to say, we've got a few seconds. There he's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that happen. Yeah. Hurdle wanted to get tossed. He wasn't going to go back without first being ejected. Okay. The evidence. The chopper to short. Harrison's throw to Alvarez. 
He's saying he got the right hand in. That, that's going to be the premise for Gary Darling to throw on the outfield side. Darling might be right. Here it comes. Very close. It is close. It is so close. Hurdle shooting out of the dugout. Many times, if that throw gets there in time, the advantage is going to go to the defense. Gary Darling, the crew chief. Now Travis Wood with the infield in and nobody out. Still might be bunning, but he's such a good hitter that uh, not automatic. Not try to put runners in second and third. Bunts it fair. Throw to second, and they get nobody again. Barajas threw to second very late. Barney in there, and the Pirates playing a very bad game tonight. Base is loaded, nobody out. Fielder's choice air on the catcher. Right there, Rod. One of the problems was the ball takes off and goes toward first base. He catches a flyer that Harrison basically has to leave his feet for. It's the fourth air. Pirates. Ace is loaded, nobody out. Infield in for David De Jesus. Then Hurdle ejected for the fourth time this season. The magic number. The Cubs lead by four, four errors, four projection. Jeff Bannister, the bench coach, now takes over as manager. <laughs> well, let's see if AJ Burnett and the Pirate defense have any magic at all here in the sixth inning. Sanchez almost threw it away. The Pirates can't do anything right here in the sixth. This is a nightmare. Barajas doesn't, doesn't hold on to the ball. Yeah, he drops the ball at the plate. It just. And that's an E3. It's five errors. And Bannister going to come out and make a change. Not a ball has left the infield here. It started with the ball that Jackson hit off Josh Harrison. Five errors.
nobody out. Brett Jackson hit the ground ball. Darwin Barney after the wild pitch hit the ground ball to Harrison who threw to Alvarez who tried to get to the bag and then tried to make the tag and no definitive answer on the replay. It looked as though perhaps Barney did sneak in there. Michael McHenry now catching a new battery. Justin Wilson and Travis Wood bunted the ball and Barajas threw high and late to second. Then David DeJesus at the ground ball to Gabby Sanchez who threw wide to Barajas. Justin Wilson a starter at AAA Indianapolis where he went nine and six and twenty five starts. Handful of uh, appearances out of the bullpen. Boy. So Barajas out. McHenry will hit the ninth spot. And the infield in again. Insult to entry there. A rocket. I mean, it's just. I hate to say it lightly, it's one of those nights, but it's one of those nights and then some. This is strange stuff. First five error game for the Pirates since June of 2010, when they made six against the White Sox. Base. One hit. Two and one. Now Buena has walked, grounded out, and struck out. Five nothing Cubs. That's driven toward the gap in right center field. Barney Wood will score. De Jesus is held at third. Two run double. And it is seven nothing Cubs. Valbuena doubles home a pair. We're going to see a replay. I really don't want to, but. <laughs> It's there in the middle of the plate and the drive to right center field, and it just continues. And uh, you know, sometimes they like to say the Cubs have lost six in a row. Somebody's going to pay. Well, the invoice has been sent to the Pirates. And now, with uh, nobody out, second and third, they have the corners in and the infield. The middle infielders back. Nine hits now for the Cubs. Anthony Rizzo reached on the first error of the game. It was on Brock Holt. Well, this becomes a search for an out. Strikeouts. Pretty incredible. The first four men for the Cubs do not hit the ball out of the infield. The Pirates don't record an out. Albuena then greets Justin Wilson with a double into right center. Three and two on Rizzo. And 
he walks him to set up a bases loaded situation for Alfonso Soriano. Justin Wilson, the rookie lefty, now gets a visit from not only Michael McHenry, but Jeff Bannister will call on a new pitcher. Chris LaRue coming on. A double and a walk. And now Chris LaRue comes in. Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Jeep. Now get a great deal on a legendary Jeep vehicle at the Jeep Summer Clearance Event by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, we think possible. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! Well, they're hanging in there. Enthusiastic Bucko fans hoping for some magic. Needing an out here in the sixth inning. Think, think about the scenario going into this game. Burnett, 6 and 0 yep. against the Cubs, almost had a no hitter. 8 and 2 in this ballpark. Travis Wood is 0 and 8 in his last 10 starts. Tell me that the games have no memory. It's what's happening tonight. Yep. It's one of those nights. Soriano against Burnett was two for three. And knowing the Cubs, the frustration of the year itself, and then six losses in the last six games, they probably are going to try to score 30. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Well, you could really break their hearts tonight. You really could. But boy, you better start getting to work. Four times Soriano has done that thing. Two on Soriano. Tough year for the Cubs. Tough year for Chris LaRue. Time on the disabled list was taken off the roster. No one else signed him. Uh, Pirates brought him back and pitched most of this season following that in the minor leagues. Talk about this baseball being a funny game in more ways than one. 
The way this uh, game started out, Steve talked about the fact that we got a pitcher in AJ Burnett, six and zero, lifetime against the Cubs, a struggling team, a struggling Travis Wood. Likewise, with individual players. I mean, taking off the roster, Steve, the Pirates didn't think they'd stand a chance to get him back. Figured any club could have signed him, and and so. And the said that could do damage you know, to your ego too. Yes, indeed. Spent a long time talking with Jeff Karstens about that because just a couple of years ago, Karstens was off the, the major league roster, and any team could have signed him. As Karstens told the rule, look, we're ending up. I'm in the rotation. One and two on Soriano. Careers can take abrupt turns. Mentioned to the Pirates last year, he'd like a chance to start. They didn't think that would be in his or the team's best interest, but he played winter ball this year and got a chance to start a handful of games for Dean Trainer, who was managing that team. And Trainer, the manager of the Triple A Indianapolis Indians, and there's a strikeout of Alfonso Soriano. Bad chase by Soriano. He was known to rack up the strikeouts as number 130. And he, he, he really does know it. Maru born in Montreal. A fly ball to shallow right. Jesus, you wouldn't think would try to tag. Yeah, he is going to try. Gunned it to the plate by Jones, and the runner put on the brakes. Castro figuring he might have had an RBI there. This is uh, kind of interesting, though, isn't it? That they would attempt leading seven to nothing. What do they got to lose? Well. But they were yesterday. They were barking at the Washington Nationals for stealing yeah. bases, leading by only five in the fifth. They're leading by seven in the sixth. The Nationals weren't happy about a couple of stolen bases in that inning, and Jason Worth swinging at a 3-0 pitch. But again, and it goes back to different circumstance, certainly, because they were in the midst of. Just a terrible series, so they were frustrated. But it goes back to that age old question when do you call off the dogs? Misunori Takahashi ready. Dale Swain. He is with the box and a strikeout. And Chris LaRue only gets one out, but then three straight without a run scoring. But three come across before LaRue arrives. Seven nothing Cubs.
tonight. Ball bounced toward Gabby Sanchez, knocks it down with his bare hand. Hard to say it's a good defensive play, and it was, but uh, in spite of all that's been going on. That was in the third inning. Coors Light Freeze Camp brought to you by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Five air night for the Pirates. AJ Burnett and Gabby Sanchez talk. Are you telling me that in the top of the six they only scored three runs? It seemed like it was 40. It did. This whole thing is taking away from the really good work of Travis Wood. One hit allowed. Popped up. Travis Wood liking to use that cutter. Yep. And on the hands, the left hander, you don't have to throw it real hard. Swing this out a little bit. That breeze going out from center toward right. Talking about a weather change coming in over the weekend. It's cool. Here's September. You wouldn't have known it today. Pittsburgh area, mid 80s. There's still a rain delay in St. Louis. Cardinals and Brewers have been in a long delay at the start. Cincinnati leads Houston three to two in the sixth. And Atlanta still leading the Mets on that Jason Hayward home run. The home run was hit in the fourth inning. That's held up for Paul Mahalam. One nothing in the bottom of the sixth. Rally cap indeed. Let's go, Mike, go. A few thousand more rally caps. One, one out in the sixth. And one out walk. Number two from Wood. Travis Wood has thrown 75 pitches through five and a third. Top of the order, Brock Holt has struck out twice. Once looking, once swinging. Going out all the stops. By Mr. Castro. And, uh, not that it's a big deal, but his manager does not like that kind of play. And you talk about old school, Dale Swain. Yeah, look at that. That picture says it all. Swain yeah. amazed that they didn't get two out of that. Thought his strong arm could get there quick enough. And Bob Holt was happy to be in the big leagues. He's going to prove it by hustling down the first baseline. Swain gave uh, Castro a good talking to earlier this year in June. Basically talking to him about keeping his head in the game, mental mistakes. He was on a potential double play ball at AT&T Park. He got the ground ball, flipped it to Castro. Castro touched the bag, 
and avoided a slide by Brandon Belt, kept on gliding and was seemingly unaware there were only two outs at that point in the fifth inning. And Swain said it's unacceptable. And these things have to stop happening. We're just going to stop playing. So these are things my son does in high school, maybe. And it's irrelevant whether or not Castro would have turned that double play back in June, Neil Swain said. Castro himself said it was very embarrassing and that he knows it can't happen. Apologized to his team and everybody. You can't accept careless at this level. This, it doesn't work that way. Following what really should have been an inning ending double play, Marte walks and it brings up McCutcheon. See, but see, because Dale Swain knows that one swing in the back can get the Pirates in this game. It's been ugly to this point. But you are to play the game correctly. One nothing, twenty to nothing, five to five. McCutcheon has flied out twice to left. Last time he sent Soriano back to the wall. Well, eventually to the wall. But yeah, to, right. Halfway under the track yeah. and then to the wall. Soriano <laughs> sent himself back to the wall. That's hit to center field pretty deep to the wall. Oh my goodness, what a catch Jackson just made. Jackson just made an unbelievable catch. Brett Jackson obviously hurt full speed into the fence. Now there is a commitment. They've lost six in a row, and there's a commitment by Jackson. Red he got to the ball and the wall at just about the same moment. Just absolutely crushed that fence. What a play by Brett Jackson. Little assistance. Former first round pick out of the University of California, Berkeley. Jail Swain just gave him up. He's out. He's done. He's supposed to lead off yeah. in the seventh inning. And uh, the fans here, what a great yeah. reaction from the crowd giving a standing ovation. And he acknowledges that. Full speed. Oh, man. Because there, there's the, the chain link fence, but there's the rail, the pipe support, too. All the bullpen guys are waving 
a trainer on. That's a little reminiscent of Aaron Rowan about six years ago in Philadelphia. Boy, amazing. He made the catch and held on. AGH can. Good look at full speed into the fence. And the ball tried to get out there. They have those hinged gloves and they close over the ball. But take nothing away from the commitment. Saw a couple of things, kind of a careless play by Castro, and then a total commitment by Jackson in center field. Brett Jackson getting up, and everybody, including Pirate fans, applauding Brett Jackson as he got to the dugout. Campana, I think, as I see him. Yep. What a play by the rookie Brett Jackson made his major league debut in. Los Angeles. August the 5th. Dale Swain. Certainly has to appreciate the efforts of that rookie. And Tony Campana bats. For Brett Jackson. Two fifty three hitter. And it remains seven nothing. Couple situations for Andrew McCutcheon from Soriano and then Jackson. Andrew could be having himself a pretty good yeah. night. At the first ball in the fourth inning, at the, the second flyout to Soriano was hit pretty well, and this one hit right on the nose. Five foot eight, 165 pounds up there with a one two count. Off of Harrison was having a miserable night. This could be the sixth error. It is. Sixth error of the game on the Pirates. We'll be looking in the record books again. In between Hop. Six errors, most since, uh, as we said earlier, six error game, June 16, 2010. Darwin Barney, one for three. Spread among five pirate players. Talked about the play that Rowan made six years ago, banging into the fence, injured uh, his nose, his nose uh, crashing into the outfield wall. Ooh. Yeah, that's a facial. Oh, <laughs> see the blood flowing. Yeah. There will be blood. <laughs> there will be blood. That movie. That, I know that, what I, you meant. <laughs> There was well, no major damage, but we'll just have to wait and see if we get any kind of report from Cubs clubhouse. They're checking on his right knee. He was down on the ground for a while. I thought they're checking too for concussion, possibly. But flash. Recoil off that fence. Dale Swain himself knows all about what now an injury can affect a career. Certainly affected his when he was with Milwaukee. Fly ball pop up. So yep, in the shallow left field, he collided with Daryl Hamilton just a couple of years into his big league career. Hamilton's left knee collided with Swain's left shin. And the runner, Campana, will reach second. The ball in the dirt. E6 wild pitch. One of the 
post game period you start thinking what's next. One ball two strikes on Darwin Barney. In the dirt in case you're wondering the last time the Pirates committed more than six errors. You have to go back to September 16, 1985. They committed seven errors that night against the Cardinals. Three and two now on Darwin Barney. This is kind of psychologically compounded by the fact that just came back from uh, a loss in the first game against Houston to win two in a row in front of small crowds. Now you get probably over 30,000 people here on a Friday night. Toward the corner. Foul ball. Jones went over. For disaster, you go full speed against that kind of waist high low fence down there. Who knows what could happen? Foul ball and nothing going on injury wise. Still three and two on Darwin Barney. The Pirates committing six errors tonight. And you see the, the crowd on a free shirt Friday. Game one of three against the Cubs. Most people figure just like those Astros. Like to sweep, but you got to take two of three. And heard the talk around here. Same thing. Like to sweep. There's a stumble by Jones. He recovers as the ground gave way. Guns it to Harrison. Campana back. One away. Pairs will be made there. Out of the block, so <laughs> spin of the tire there, and that was to get it in. Ground ball, Alvarez a look to second, the first, and you hold your breath on every even routine ball, don't you? Absolutely. On a night yep. like tonight, yep. six errors. Top of the order, David DeJesus. Campana still at second. That game, September 16th, 1985, the seven errors. Two were committed by Bill Allman. You remember these names, Steve. Allman started at first base that night. Johnny Ray yep. committed an error. Mike Brown was playing in right field. Were they going to give Mike Brown? They were going to give in him 50 games. Yep. He's yeah. going to be the right fielder. Sid Bream, of all people, committed an error. He came in to play first base late in the game. Tony Pena. And Alberto Gonzalez. He later came on to play third base that night in the loss to the Cardinals. Eight to four game one of a doubleheader at Three River Stadium. September 16th, 1985. Last time the Pirates team committed more than six errors in a game. Owen two under Jesus. The count blocked by McHenry. It was a one, two, three inning, the top of the second. OJ Burnett, three up, three down, with a strikeout. It's been a little crazy since. LaRue well, pitching uh, much of the season for AAA Indianapolis, helping that club in the International League West. They are playing game three of their best of five series against the Charlotte Knights, top farm club of the White Sox, after losing the first two games of that series. Indy 
leads game three five to nothing. Now six to nothing. In the bottom of the seventh. Playing at Charlotte, best of five series. Two on David De Jesus, seven nothing Cubs. In that game, by the way, for Indy, Phil Irwin, who started this year at Double A Altoona, six and two thirds innings of two hit shutout ball. He has struck out ten. You know, this this kind of game, Greg, is, is as a player, you sit there and say, "Hey, well, everybody has these kind of games." But when you, you're watching it from a, a distance, as as a fan or Part of the uh, the Pirates family, they are agonizing. But the players know that these kind of games happen. The, what makes it worse is that you're down to the last three weeks of the regular season, and you're involved in a pennant race. Yeah. You need to show signs that you're a good enough team to be in the postseason. Kind of down the stretch. It's, it's forgotten in April, but it is not forgotten in September. Exactly right. Bounce to second. A stumble, and look at this. Safe, and there's going to be the seventh error of the game. Incredible. The most by a Pirates team since September of 1985, and fans are letting the Pirates know about it. Do you're holding your breath on every play? This one out to second base. It's behind Holt. Recovers. Not in time. Quite honestly, you're never going to get that call, even if it's close at first base. After the ball does that. And Chris Larue will exit. Jeff Bannis for trying to keep a positive approach. Two errors in this inning. Seven errors in the game. Action from the Steelers Pitt and WVU during our press conference Tuesdays. Here from head coaches Mike Tomlin, Paul Christ, and Dana Holgerson as they break down every game and preview their upcoming opponent. Press conference Tuesday every Tuesday starting at noon on Root Sports. There's uh, Mike Tomlin talk about the Denver game. We'll wrap that up and look ahead to the Jets in week two. Pitt getting ready for Virginia Tech and WVU getting ready for JMU. Sonori Takahashi now with two outs. And Luis Valbuena at the plate. 
Well, the miseries for Pitt last night, yeah. the miseries for the Pirates tonight. Mm -hmm. Football type score, huh? Seven nothing and seven errors. It, it feels like 17, but it's seven. It is. Josh Harrison. Brock Holt, Holt committing a couple. Starling Marte, a couple. Rod Barajas, Gabby Sanchez. Seems like no one is immune. You wonder if somebody's out there thinking, don't hit it toward me. Yeah, yeah. Don't you? Don't you wonder that? Yeah, I mean, it's like a snake that somebody put a curse on you. Different innings, two errors. What's the mantra? Don't give them four outs. Oh. Don't give them five either. And one now on Valbuena. To him. Takahashi walks Valbuena. And now they're loaded for Anthony Rizzo. You go back to the record books, and you wonder what was the last time a team, a Pirates yeah. team, committed more than seven. I knew that was coming, and how far do we have to dig for that? How about September 17th, 1939? A team that featured Paul Weiner and Archie Vaughn. Now they didn't commit any of the eight errors in a 7-3 loss to the Philadelphia Phillies at Forbes Field. Game one of a doubleheader. But L.B. Fletcher committed one, the first baseman. Red Julish, the second baseman. Later, Bill Brubacher playing second. Frankie Gustine, the third baseman, committed three that day. And there's a cross up, it looked like. Ray Mueller, the catcher, committed an error. And Johnny G, the starting pitcher. Eight error game for the Pirates against the Phillies. And September of 1939. That's a save, glove save by Michael McHenry on the cross up. And coming up, kind of smiling to Takahashi, maybe as. What else can you do? What else can you do? By the way, Dash points out, Greg Simpkovich, our stage manager, that 1939, the year that the Wizard of Oz debuted. There you have it. That, that makes all the sense in the world, then. Doesn't it? Need to see the wizard. Two one count. What, what, what else is debuting tonight? The new movies uh, always come out Friday. Nightmare on Federal Street. Dude. Three and one. Bruised right knee, by the way, is what they tell us uh, why Brett Jackson was forced to leave the game. So, uh, considering the impact against that fence, that doesn't sound all that bad. Just a bruised left knee. He did walk in under his own power. And a bases loaded walk to force in a run.
someone in the trailer said lions and tigers and cubs. Oh my. Alfonso Soriano to the plate. Ray Searage to the mound. Two outs. Eight nothing. No, no surprise that the Clemente Bridge is busy again. Draws a reaction. One ball, one strike. For the time being, this belongs to Takahashi. Nothing doing in the bullpen. Obviously, Cubs bullpen napping. And a shot past Alvarez. And this will be a 10 nothing lead. Soriano, his second and third RBIs of the game. Jesus and Valbuena score. Dave Sapelt will pinch run at first base for Soriano. Three hit night for Soriano and three RBIs. Jeff Bannister manages and hard to manage this. Yes. Mess. Clint Hurdle back in his office watching this mess. But he will say after this one. Nothing one we can game. do about it. It's one game and we'll shower well like we've done all year. Want to know on Starling Castro. He has two hits. Comes have 10 hits and lead 10 nothing. Am I going out on a limb by saying this is the worst game the Pirates have played all year? Yeah, there's. No, it, seriously. Yes. It is, right? It is the worst. Man. We saw a couple borderline performances, not the least of which was the first Houston game, and then that Sunday yeah. afternoon game. Not very dazzling, but yeah, this is yeah, by far. Ten runs for the Cubs. They've already left eight runners on. Cubs uh, won a 10 nothing game earlier this season June the 5th in Milwaukee the whitewash of the Brewers. Former Cub Ryan Dempster was on the mound. Ivani Gallardo. And as they would say in the old West this is a reckoning. Yeah. This has been a. Miserable club this Cubs team. Especially the second half. Winning just three of 26 games on the road since the All Star break. Losers of six in a row coming into this game. Being outscored 31 to 9 in the series in Washington that finished up yesterday. Man, a 
another hit. Wow. Rizzo going to score. Ball is kicked in right center field. Will that be another error? It has to be. That runner is going to hold up at third base. They haven't said anything yet. Out to right center field, Garrett Jones going over, and then the ball gets away from him, and just the beat just goes on. Let's watch now. The boot. The AGH cam. They have not mentioned an error. Obviously the first runner. Well, we don't see Pat Listash here. We see him slow down though. Yeah. And Listash I, is probably way down the line. Yeah. Uh, but we see the runner slow down, which makes you think, Steve, like you're saying, that they probably held up the runner until Ball's Jones hit. booted it. It's kind of a moot point. Yeah. At this juncture. If Car Castro gets a double. Penalized five yards for piling on. Twelve nothing. Steve Clevenger at the plate. Stunning to watch this. Is that just the second extra base hit? Well, Blaine had doubled last inning. Uh, could be my scorecard looks like the scoreboard. Popped up and listen to this crowd when this catch is made. They bat around for the second time in two innings. Seventh inning stretch presented by the new face of Northwood Realty Services. Fans, it's time for the seventh inning stretch. We invite you now to stand, follow the bouncing Eaton Park Smiley Cookie, and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. There's just no way to, uh, <laughs> to clean that up. That is bad. 12 nothing. Dave Sapelt stays in the game in left field. 
Tony Campana stays in the game in center field. Joe Mather comes into the game in right field. And the new pitcher. Roberto Cabrera. There you have it. Would go six innings, not give up a run on one hit. Walk three and struck out five. I would say he's in line to get the win. Unless something wonderful happens. It's been that kind of night. Not much wonderful. Here Jones has gone over two. Pirates are just one hit. That was the Alvarez double in the fifth. Travis Wood. One hit. No runs. Walk three. Struck out five. <laughs> Coach is hanging in there. Dan Balsma. He's not giving up. Keeping a card like we are, and we hope you are. The first two runs are unearned, charged to LaRue. The last three runs are earned for Takahashi, but unearned for the team. One ball, two strikes on Jones. Takahashi. Couple of rough outings since joining the Bucks. Couple of good outings. But, uh, a little bit early yet to really make a call, especially in a blowout. Despite the blowout, by the way, I want to thank Al and Rose Waleski because they delivered those treats today, Steve, that you and I enjoyed. Tim and Bob, Grand Slam fans. Where are the cookies? All gone tonight. Two and two the count. With nobody out and the Pirates trailing 12 nothing. Two two count on Garrett Jones. Nationals and Marlins tied at six. Bottom of the eighth in D.C. Still a delay in St. Louis Cardinals Brewers. Reds lead the Astros 3 2 in the eighth. And the Braves lead the Mets 2 0 in the ninth. Pitch low and in, 3 and 2 the count. Dodgers will take on the Giants. Josh Beckett for the Dodgers against Tim Lincecum. Dodgers have lost two straight, both to the Padres. They had an off day yesterday. Lifted. To center field. Campana. For the out. Coors Light Cold Hard Blast. Sunday in Milwaukee. Danny Sanchez. Goes deep. Fifth home run. Second as a pirate. Cold Hard Blast brought to you by Coors Light. The world's most refreshing beer. Danny Sanchez home run. One of three hit by... The Pirates that day, and the Brewers at five. There's only one thing you can do when you watch a game like this in this kind of situation, it's downstairs, is hope that the Dodgers and the Cardinals lose. That's all you can do. Yep. yep. Look for help. Starting the day, a game and a half back, tied with the Dodgers, a game and a half back of the Cardinals for that second wild card spot. Presley 
Did not start against the lefty Travis Wood. Hutchin uh, 0 for 3. Start of the day at 345. One point back of Melky Cabrera, the suspended Giants outfielder, right now at 343 for McCutcheon. The next closest to McCutcheon, by the way, is Buster Posey, hitting 325, the Giants catcher. The Giants lead the Dodgers by four and a half games in the National League West. Go at them tomorrow. What the Pirates will be saying. At least the pace has been quite good. Sure. Quick. Two outs. Follow the Pirates with the MLB.com at bat 12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Pirates.com for details. Checking out uh, the races throughout baseball. Do that on the MLB at bat app. Yankees beat the Orioles eight to five. Went to the Orioles won last night with three homers in the bottom of the eighth inning. But with the Yankees win tonight over the Birds, the Yankees lead by a game in the East. Tampa Bay and Texas tied at one at the drop, bottom of the ninth. Tampa Bay started the day two back of the Birds and Yankees. The Red Sox trail 4 0 at Fenway in the fifth to Toronto. Currently, Little sticky there. Yeah. The amazing Orioles this year. Big time surprise. And I don't know if Paul Mahalan is still in that Atlanta game, but it's a three nothing Atlanta lead in the ninth inning over the Metropolitans. Now that's a serious fan. Yep. Listen to him. <laughs> Not happy about the way things are going. He wants everybody to know it. Yep. Might have to have him that's in like, a clubhouse tomorrow. It's like the, it's like Pete down in the truck, yeah. just smiling but hollering at us. Paul Mahalam. Went five and a third, a five hit shutout ball. And, uh, four pitchers have come on in relief. Trying to preserve the win for the Braves. Let's go, Bucks. Walk brings up Jeff Clement to pinch hit. Clement's career pinch hitting numbers. Pinch hit in the sixth inning on Wednesday night and walked. Oh for eight with the Pirates. Spent most of this season at Triple A Indianapolis, Jeff Clement. 
second in the International League with 35 doubles. At 16 homers, drove in 57. Indianapolis leads 8 0 in the ninth inning at Charlotte. Two and one. Strike two. In that uh, indie game playing, as you said, Charlotte tonight, game three of the best of five series. Daniel Moskus pitched for Charlotte in relief. One and a third gave up a run. 675 ERA for the former Pirate lefty Daniel Moskus now pitching for the White Sox AAA affiliate. Bouncing ball to second. And Barty keeps that to airless streak intact. Listen to him. Get an exclusive look at your Buccos off the field on an all new inside Pirates baseball this week. Look back at Pedro Alvarez's mammoth shot that became the longest Pirates home run in PNC Park history. Hear the guys weigh in on home plate collisions. See our AGH plays of the week and much more inside Pirates baseball tomorrow after Pirates post game on Root Sports. Some changes for the Bucks. Presley comes in to play left field. Starling Marte moves from left over to center field and Kyle McPherson coming into work here. The bottom third of the Cubs order in the top of the eighth. Everybody trying to get to the finish line of this game. Everybody. Pearson gets a chance to hit, though he's uh, put in the uh, seventh spot of the order, which was uh, the last out. I saw him taking batting practice with James McDonald before the regular position players. It was impressive. Well, you're going to have to run him up there a few times. Huh? Campana, who came in for Jackson. Won't get him. He's got great speed. It just was going to be too difficult when it came off the bat. Way that uh, Josh is going to have to try to make in the hole. No, no chance. Base hit. Hit. Number thirteen. 
unfortunate in that that throw was corralled over at first base yeah. because if he goes to second base. We're talking 1939 if it yep. goes past. Yep. <laughs> Last time a Pirates team committed more than seven errors. Bounce to Alvarez. Double play. Around the horn. Good feed by Pedro over to second base and a good turn by Holt back to first. Joe Mather bats for the first time. Is he Kyle McPherson, 14th round pick five years ago? Mentioned like to see him hit because. Uh, Impressive during BP hit a couple balls well out to left. Maybe no surprise those who might have seen him play at the University of Mobile in Alabama hit 302 as an infield during his junior year. Signed by Darren Mazeroski, whose father celebrated a birthday this week, Wednesday. 2-0 count now. Those was 94 miles an hour. What pitcher of the year in the minor leagues? Couple last year. Yep. So uh, Darren Mazeroski with uh, two guys up to the big leagues, Alex Presley and McPherson. Two and one on Mather. Job, Mike. He knows it. Give him a minute to collect himself. Foul ball. And the right cross to the chin of Michael McHenry. James Russell will finish things up. Atlanta finishes up the shutout. Mahalam beats Jonathan Neese. Three to nothing in New York. And the Reds lead three to two in the ninth inning. Of course, they've got our oldest Chapman on the hill to close things out. Still a delay in St. Louis. They get to start that game. Mather down on strikes.
A deposit for your 2013 Pirate season tickets today from full season to half and 20 game plans. There's a plan that's right for you. Enjoy great benefits all season long like batting practice in the Pirate cages, Q&A with Pirates management and more. Plus deposits now made, made now receive 2012 postseason priority. Place your deposit. Go to Pirates.com dot Dot com, yeah, slash 2013. Pirates.com slash 2013. That's the way the night's going. Basically, just go to Pirates.com, right? Yeah. <laughs> but they'll, they'll take care of us. Yeah, they will. They will save, <laughs> save the night. Lord, help Don't, us jump. Save us. Don't jump. James Russell will come on to work the bottom of the eighth inning. 32,699 on hand tonight. Unfortunately, they saw a bad one. But many will return tomorrow night, game two of the series. All on Josh Harrison. Bucks with just one hit in all this. It's just bad in every facet. The other day, Clint Hurdle was talking about the, the, the triangle. You have to play good defense, pitch well, and hit and score in order to win most games, most nights. And if any of those three you don't have part of that triangle, you're not going to win a lot of games. Well, the Pirates have nothing to offer in terms of a positive tonight. Like the Bermuda Triangle. Tonight. Yeah, yep. See James McDonald tomorrow night against Jeff Samarja. Leads us to our Nissan Road Ahead tomorrow. And Jeff Wilson against Jeff Locke on Sunday. A couple of left handers. Pirates and Cubs. Gotta get James McDonald back on track after a tough trip in Milwaukee. And a base hit for Harrison. That snaps his 0 for 12 hit the string. Henry. Walked his last time up and first time up. He got part of the double switch. Rod Barajas talking to Neil Walker. Steve said earlier that the only thing the Pirates can hope for tonight in their fans is that the Giants can beat the Dodgers and that the Brewers can defeat the Cardinals. And they are going to start, we are told, at uh, 10 30. 15 minutes to start that game. Gallardo against Loesch. We've had a long night. Yeah. Had a long one. St. Louis. We hope that Tim Linscombe can return to his two time Cy Young Award winning form against LA. He's not all bad. Get a kiss on the cheek during this one. <laughs> Done okay. Yeah.
Down the line and left. Oh, that's the basis for the fort. Maybe break the shutout. Harrison going to be waved. And so the fans have something to cheer. RBI double by McHenry. Bucks on the board. Michael gets the take that one outside and just hook it back around. Down the left field corner. Fifth career double for McHenry, who's now driven in 39 on the season. I think it's not been a tough stretch for the Cubs. They've got an 11 run lead and they've got action in the bullpen. Needing need to get some guys some work. They've got 12 men in that bullpen. Yeah. <laughs> 12 man bullpen. And they added another pitcher, a starter today, because they're going to shut Samarja down after tomorrow night's start. But there they are. Who does Dale Swain go to next? I think Miguel Sokolovich. Now ball right side, and uh, Russell caught napping. Nobody home. Just stood there and watched. There was an infield hit for Brock Holt. A little bit of slip, but yeah, so the night afterward. Follows through that way and then slips. No. Yeah, you got to give him a little bogey on that one because the infield's been so messed up. Maybe nobody can really play. Look at this. They scored three runs off a Roldis Chapman. That's headline stuff. The Astros lead five to three. Trying to end a lot of their miseries and make somebody pay for them. He's grounded out, struck out, and walked. His catcher's taking a shot off the mask. Nobody safe tonight. McHenry a double and a run driven in. An infield hit for Brock Holt. Dropping in. Catch made by Antana and a runner will tag and score. Kennedy in the third, so Marte gets a sacrifice fly. Two ball game and now Alex Presley. The 
where Elvis Chapman suffers his first blow, blown save since June 24th against the Twins. Show you that score. They had converted 27 in a row until tonight. In this spot of the order was 0 for 3. There will be a lot of attention on Chapman in postseason play. Somebody can throw it 100 miles an hour. Of course, his first blown save was uh, June the 10th. At the Cincinnati when uh, Mike Harvis and Michael McHenry had those doubles. The Pirates came back and won that one. Scored a run in the first inning, unearned off A.J. Burnett. And three in the third inning. Three more, in the sixth, five, and the seventh. And that gave up seven runs, three earned in his five plus. Two count on Presley. Russell just the third pitcher for the Cubs tonight. Cabrera won a scoreless inning, walking a strikeout following Travis Wood. Russell takes care of Presley. Now Garrett Jones needs a hit to extend his streak. Currently at eight games. Russell had a save in the end of May this season for his career save. Three forty seven career ERA, James Russell. The lefties that can work in the middle part of a ball game can really have some extended careers. There's been a lot of guys that just have stayed around a long time because become a specialist of sorts. There's not that many of them. And how about the Travis Wood story? As you take a look at the Pirate bullpen coming into the game, 0-8 in his last 10 starts. And is brilliant against the Pirates. Six shutout innings, one hit given up. One and two. Well, there's the look. Not what you call a Rembrandt. It's a first fair ball. The final out at the bottom of the eighth. Bucks get two. Down ten.
school football on Root Sports continues Thursday when Baldwin takes on Penn Hills, a heated fought a matchup. Be here for the live kickoff at 7. And tune in Thursday nights this fall for another season of McDonald's High School Football on Root Sport. Boy, what a great game in AAA last night. McDonald's High School Football, Montour beat Central Valley 28 27 in overtime. Mm. Hope you got a chance to see that one. There's Adrian Cardenas. The man who broke up the no hit bid. AJ Burnett. Two out pinch hit single in the bottom of the eighth inning. July 31st at Wrigley Field. Martinez bats for Russell. Marte from center. McPherson, his second inning of work. And he faces Luis Valbuena. Burnett, Justin Wilson, Chris LaRue, Isanori Takahashi, and Kyle McPherson. Saying, listen, it is 12 to 2. Everybody's trying to put a lid on trying to get it. Do you on. really think that they're trying to throw at you? And why would they want to throw at you? Get a grip there <laughs> and lose track of things. Now, looking at that replay, <laughs> I'm just trying to look, go back and sort this thing out, see if there's any reason. Like Kyle McPherson would throw at Valbuena. Just trying to think, Steve. Just trying to look. If there's any reason at all. That's all. I'm trying to figure. Maybe the minor league passed. Share of damage tonight. No reason to think he shouldn't have scored on the uh, base hit by Soriano in the seventh. So again, you just wonder, you see something like that, maybe there's a, a history of minor league days. Three and two on Luis Valbuena. Samarja goes tomorrow for the Cubs. That's the right side. Two outs. Most of the season at the big league level, anyway. There would no, not be any history between these two guys. This is spending any time in the minors this year. And the I Cubs are in the Pacific Coast League, so throw that one out. Mr. Valvoline, sometimes pitches get away from people for no real apparent reasons. Bouncing ball to second. And on to first. One, two, three. For the second time tonight, the Cubs go down in order. Head to the bottom of the night. 12 2 Cubs.
we want you to be a part of tonight's Pirates post game show. Text your comments on the Pirates to 412 412. And then tune in to the post game show right after the game. Your turn to tell us how you root for the Buckos. Post game with what? Rock? Come on. Yeah. Rock and Rob. Rock and Robin. Let's see if Rock can figure this one out. He'll have all the answers for you. Dan, cameraman, telling everybody to look back. Brian LaHare, pinch hit, stays in the game at first. And to get some work, the closer, Carlos Marble. Not sitting on the streak that Chapman had, but uh, 16 in a row. We mentioned that earlier in the ball game. Uh, let me see. Let me check. It's not a safe situation. You're certain, yeah? I am certain. Still trying to have some fun. Uh, well out of hand. Trying to keep it loose. It is one game. Sanchez over two of the walk. Just a normal bring it. Forty three innings, fifty four strikeouts. Didn't they take him out of the closer role earlier this year? I believe a little bit. Two strike count on Eddie Sanchez. Dale Swain's club about ready to end their six game losing streak. Swain began his managerial career with the Pirates organization, Double A Altoona. Eleven years ago, his good buddy John Weiner was a, a player coach. He forged a great friendship. As, uh, Dale Swain, of course, also played with Rock, with the Bucks. Swain with the Pirates in '96, '97. Came back in '99. Thought for a while that uh, Rock might wind up coaching for Dale. Bigly well. Yep. We thought that uh, the real possibility when his name came up. And Swain interviewed for a Pirates job as well, but got the, his first opportunity to manage full time here with the Cubs. He was an interim manager with Milwaukee at the end of the 08 season. Just a dozen games. Lead off walk. I don't think there's much doubt in anybody's mind that John Wayne could coach in the big leagues yeah. with, without a doubt. But we're glad we got him. Yep. Alvarez has bounced into a double play, doubled to break up any thoughts of a no hitter, and walked. Lost in all this, certainly not in Dale Swaim's mind, but maybe by us momentarily. The catch that was made by Brett Jackson, the rookie on the ball, hitting the sixth inning by Andrew McCutcheon. Forced to lead the game with a bruised knee. Full speed in the fence and left center field. Time it was seven nothing. Swain's club added 
five more in the seventh. Campana took over in center field for the injured Brett Jackson. 2 0 count on Alvarez. Worth another look for sure. This is uh, A for effort and then some. Held onto the ball. You know, you think about going over at that angle too. If you were to get your hand tangled up in that chain link fence and get at that speed, you get yeah. your finger off. Almost looked on that replay like he was hand, looking yeah, at it to yeah, see what damage was done. Because you're, you're kind of trying to find the fence full speed. Yeah. You get the glove out there, and or if you hook your hand in there, you could connective tissue and tendons and all that kind of stuff. Three and two. A little tapper. Armol. There's Alvarez. And one out. Jordy Mercer to pinch hit. Underway in St. Louis, underway in San Francisco. No score in either game. Early, early. Tired two away. So Josh Harrison comes to the plate, singled and scored in the eighth. Marmol takes care of Mercer routinely. Marmol hoping not to have to face that man on deck again. Henry, one of the great moments of the 2011 season. Oh, look out. Breaking ball from Marmol didn't break. There's the fort. Home run he hit last year off Marmol. His first big league home run. Eighth inning. It was a, a tied the game. Wasn't a game winner, was it? No. It tied the game? Put, it put, put the Bucks ahead in the eighth. So it was not a game winner. The three run ended up being actually a game winning shot, just wasn't a walk off. Made the score 7 4. One ball, two strikes. An Emmy nominated telecast on Root Sports last year. Jam packed crowd at PNC Park. Seeing the Pirates beat Marmol and the Cubs. But Marmol takes care of things in the ninth, and we can finally put this one to bed, Steve. Oh, let's let it uh, hibernate. Let's put it to bed and bury it. One of those games, and uh, the Pirates got beat up. They beat themselves up. It's over 12 2. Strap it on tomorrow. Simple as that. Not much more to say about it. Shower well, Buckos. 12 2, thumping. 
sure a lot to talk about with Rob and Rock as the Bucks are rocked 12 to 2. All right, guys. 